there, you've made it to the new year and you know what this means. New month, new experiences, new opportunities. Thanks for joining me. I'm Sandra and I'll be your host for the next half hour. So stick around. In 2018, the public healthcare sector continued to chart a dynamic and transformative path through physical infrastructure and equipment upgrades and the implementation of best practices to ensure the optimum health of the population. I think we are on the right track in terms of where we need to go to cater to the needs of our population. Catch our review of the Ministry of Health in 2018, coming in Jamaica Magazine on Monday, January 14, 2019. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, January 11. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has assured the residents of St. James that their security will be prioritized even as the state of public emergency expires on January 31. According to Mr. Holness, the security forces will continue its crime-fighting efforts in the parish, which led to a 70% reduction in murders and a 58.6% decline in shootings in 2018 when compared to 2017. The government will continue to be resolute and relentless in its pursuit of your safety, security, and indeed the peace of your communities. We will use all measures within the law with respect for human rights and the dignity of the person to ensure that your community remains safe. Still in St. James, work on the long-awaited Montego Bay Bypass will start next year. That's the assurance from Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who says the roadway is on track, having received cabinet approval for its construction. The submission for funding is now with the China Exim Bank, awaiting their approval. But we have started the development of the final plans uh, and designs. Stanley Construction and Czech are doing that part of the work. And so next year, we will start the brand new bypass for Montego Bay, which will significantly ease the traffic congestion and certainly improve the ease and speed of doing business in Montego Bay. The Prime Minister made the pledge as he opened the Port Authority's Montego Bay Free Zone Company Limited's Data Entry Building No. 7 Wednesday. The complex houses over 10,600 workers, including 2,000 employed at Concentrics Global Jamaica and Unique Vacations Limited the booking arm of Sandals Resort International. The over 56 U.S. million dollar three miles roadwork project is 41% complete, with half of the drainage infrastructure installed. The National Works Agency is also in the process of importing another crane to assist with the installation of the concrete girders for the three miles bridge. Communication and customer service manager at the National Works Agency, Stephen Shaw, gave the update during an interview with JIS News on Wednesday. We have already completed roughly half of the drainage infrastructural works that we have set ourselves to do. The sewer works are also ongoing. The bridge works are also ongoing at this point. What we are doing now is we are putting in the uh, uh, T-beams that will then make way for the concrete decks to be poured. So. Uh, much activity is now taking place in the Three Miles area. Mr. Shaw says the NWA is pushing to have all the bridge works in the area completed within the next three months. The work at Three Miles area forms part of the government's road infrastructure legacy projects that falls under the major infrastructure development program, MIDP. The report on the rationalization of sugar lands has been completed by the government. New investment opportunities will be made available for farmers, which include portions of sugar lands being used to grow other crops. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw made the announcement on Tuesday during the Jamaica Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors Motivational Seminar Blast Off 2019. He stated that hundreds of applications have been submitted for the production of castor beans, mango orchards, and Sea Island cotton. We have investors 
Jamaican investors who are willing to work in a mother farm relationship with small farmers to produce things that are in high demand, not just in Jamaica, but high demand re in the region and globally. An online platform, Tourism AgriLinkages Exchange Project, will be utilized to facilitate the purchase and exchange of goods between farmers and buyers within the local hotel industry as they are being targeted under this initiative. And finally, two elderly indigent men in St. Anne are now living in comfort after they individually received a home courtesy of the local government ministry. Portfolio Minister Desmond McKenzie officially handed over the homes a week ago. The two studio units, which consist of a bedroom, bathroom and a kitchen area, were constructed in the communities of Lime Hall and Mile End in St. Anne. It was made possible at a combined cost of $4 million through the Indigent Housing Program. Mr. McKenzie says the government is committed to protecting the poor and vulnerable to enhance the lives of those in need. More indigent houses will be constructed island-wide, made of modern structures and amenities instead of the wooden materials. Eight indigent houses are to be constructed, two each in St. Thomas, St. Andrew, Trelawney, and Westmoreland. You have close to some 50,000 Jamaicans living in institutions who receive weekly allocations. You have those who are living on the streets that falls under the umbrella of local government. The houses were built during November as part of local government month activities. The senior citizens aged 91 and 75 years were living in less than ideal conditions. The Poor Relief Department will be responsible for the continued care of the men. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Justice bills passed in Parliament. Check. More courts built and renovated. Check. Case disposal rates in courts improved. Check. More justices of the peace appointed and trained. Check. Contracts for improved technology in courtrooms. Check. Amended were the Trafficking in Persons Act to enable a judge to try trafficking offenses without a jury. The Child Care and Protection Act, raising the penalty from 10 to 20 years for the sale or trafficking of children. And the Child Diversion Bill was passed in the House of Representatives to put children who come in conflict with the law on a path away from the criminal justice system. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? As of it. Bill and Titan Act to facilitate the implementation of child diversion in the criminal justice system and for connected matters read a third time and passed. We want to do everything within our powers to ensure that at every stage we give the child as much assistance to really lead on a straight and narrow path. After 11 years, the first female Chief Justice of the country, Zayla Makala, passed the baton to Brian Sykes. As I inherit this mantle from my predecessor, immediate and predecessors past, I must say that I am under no illusion about what is expected of me and our legal system. 2018 also saw the Justice Ministry fulfilling its commitment of developing and delivering first-class justice infrastructures. The Supreme Court is now operating with two additional courtrooms and two restored elevators at a cost of $35 million. The Court of Appeal Building and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution have been expanded. In Clarendon, residents of Chapleton and neighboring communities now have a newly renovated family court. My hope is that within the next couple of years, 
all the courts will be first world courts. And then there were more. Government opened additional justice centers in Westmoreland, Trelawney and Port Maria. It's very important that when people come to the courts, they can have trust and confidence, not only in the deliverer of justice, but feel that they're in space that they can be comfortable and justice can be delivered. And finally, on infrastructure development, the resocialization of children was a major priority of the ministry. So that I can deliver to the family court the attendance center for the startup in January of 2019. Last year was also marked by significant improvements in case flow management. The case clearance rate for the Easter term was approximately 78%, a marked improvement of over 30% when compared to the previous term, as well as the annual clearance rate for 2017. To help make justice accessible for all, the ministry signed a contract with technology firm Growth Tech Limited for the supply of Wi-Fi modems in all courthouses across Jamaica. That is a part of the accountability that must exist in the courts that they function efficiently and the people can see how justice not only is being examined and accessed, but is being delivered. The ministry's mobile justice unit was still rolling in 2018. Our mobile justice unit is taking justice into hard to reach communities providing legal service and assistance to the poor, powerless, and marginalized. For 2018 alone, over 340 justices of the peace, or JPs, were commissioned into service and trained in mediation techniques. The updated 2018 JPs legislation allows them to operate as justices of the peace in and outside their parish of residence. When you offer your service across Jamaica, it is absolutely important for you to be fair-minded and ensure that fair play at all times is displayed as you adjudicate, as you give assistance, as you try to assist people. The promises were made and acted upon by the Minister of Justice to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace. Art is life. It's everywhere and in everything. In fact, it is everything. Art can be used to bring life to an empty room. It can be used as a vessel of expression. And believe it or not, it can be used to cultivate positive behavior and attitudes in young people. Check these next two features. Mr. Music Man, tell me a story now. What kind of story do I hear? The kind of story that speaks about how realities are being redefined. The kind of story that uses the creative magic of music as the tool to cultivate positive behavior and attitudes while simultaneously developing entrepreneurial skills. A story that calls to all Jamaicans using the familiarity of sound, rhythm and movement. The story written by Thiwi Jamaica. The Thuwe Jamaica project began in 2015 with the aim of empowering women and girls and other vulnerable groups dealing with human trafficking, domestic and intimate partner violence among other issues through various social and economic intervention programs. The project had seven activities to deepen our understanding of tolerance. A very significant part of our project was um, activity three creating the space for change and transformation through music and culture. The interventions implemented under Activity 3 included St. James' gender-based violence music initiative, including Drums for Life, 
Masters in Residence Global Competitiveness Training Program. Girls Using Ubuntu Respect and Love for Entrepreneurial Success Girls. Songwriting Competition. Downtown Music Theatre Summer Camp and Women Healing in Music. The drum has been the heartbeat of traditional African societies. It was used as the instrument to celebrate various aspects of life. Through Fiwi Jamaica, the drum became a medium of transformation for the youths engaged in the St. James Gender-Based Violence Music Initiative. The project involves the teaching of hand drumming by the Trelawney Maroon to students in selected communities in and around Manchinka Bay. We also included teaching of traditional and popular dance and also spoken word as aspects of the Drums for Life program to make it a little bit more inclusive. Throughout the 12 weeks, we ensured that the students understood that the, they were able to consider a career from playing drums. Progress, Mr. Minana, time to look back. My education is key. From poverty, it's a go set me free. Time for we as no mina of that. It has helped me being more focused in my schoolwork and being particular with my friends. Master drummers also engaged the participants through mentorship. It kind of saved me out of trouble and all my, my teenage, tender age. Yeah was all about focusing on music. I was so occupied, I didn't have time to get involved in anything else. My world, you know, every day I get up, you know, what else new was song we'll learn today. So it was a, a drive that keep me occupied. And, and so I never get involved in anything else other than music and dreaming big, you know. The practice of mentorship also filtered into the Masters in Residence MIR Global Competitiveness Training Program. The intervention also adopted the coaching and entrepreneurship strategies of Jamaica's successful track and field enterprise. The MIR program became a creative hub for songwriters, performers, technicians and managers. We wanted to, to, to present an option, uh, a blueprint that would set to young, young producers and young artists and things. You don't necessarily have to go that way. We have massage a uh, <laughs> template into, in, into place that we can say to people, here is, here is a way to train performers, here is a way to train songwriters, here are some things that you can introduce people to who are interested in management. That template produced a class with over 40 graduates, equipped with the skills to share the Jamaican creative experience on the international stage. It is much more than talent. That is only half of it, and that is exactly what the program brought to light. And it helps me to better myself as a performer, as a songwriter. I got exposed to the knowledge of engineering and marketing as well, so I can market myself as an artist. The female entrepreneurs in the MIR program, through the creation of Girls in Music, responded to the challenge as to how to enable women in the music industry. The overarching objective of Girls is to assist and empower female entrepreneurs in various industries and disciplines to achieve their goals by providing funding, mentorship, educational and entrepreneurial services, as well as other related activities. We have witnessed the ideas of various members come to fruition. These include two successful plays, Living Dangerously and Forbidden Fruit. The theme song for the Tambourine Army's March against abuse of both women and men with the deeply impactful and sobering anthem, Now Make Them Win. You are a part of the unveiling of an all-female-led album, Big Woman Things. Songwriters and lyricists were also provided with a creative space to speak of universal concerns through the songwriting competition. A total of 183 entries were submitted at the close of the 2017 staging. Contestants were required to compose lyrics to a partially completed song entitled, You Deserve to be Loved. Their advice was to talk about it from the pastor perspective rather than, you know, say, you see him beat her, you, see, you know, say, I just say, as a pastor, I would encourage you I should encourage you to stay because the first rule of a pastor is never to tell 
a, a husband and wife to separate. My mother tell me that early, no matter what. But I just decided to say right away that now make no sense. I should encourage you to stay, but dear sister, sister, I can't encourage you to do that today. Safety has to be a first priority. Don't tell me say him love me because him, him beat me because him love me. Because love don't beat or easily get angry. You know, love is patient, love is kind, as the Bible will remind. Love is supposed to bless you, not disrespect you. The philosophical underpinning of the entire project was our embrace of the South African concept of Ubuntu. I am because you are, you are because I am. And that became an important theme in the project that we not only shaped in song and music, but we delivered in much of the interventions that we've had. We wanted to empower Jamaicans to recognize that we have a responsibility for Jamaica. Jamaica belongs to all of it. It's free with Jamaica, and that means we have a responsibility to ensure that Jamaica can grow and prosper and we can achieve the visions that we've created for ourselves in Vision 2030. Visual arts has many components. These include drawing, graphics, sculpting, photography, painting, animation, and fashion design. And every year there is a university right here in Jamaica that showcases some of the best examples of these art forms. Welcome to this week's edition of the Arts Page. to what we do is to ensure and try to get the students into that headspace that exiting you are an artist yes and so your work even in how it's situated now for presentation speaks across boundaries in terms of discipline so you would have evidenced individuals whose work came out with a sculptural interpretation from a painting department so it's using different languages from different medium to create a, a, a visual expression yes that is unique to the students um, interrogation of their particular theme and um, ideas. So what I've done is to separate the human being from the universe to show how we become self-indulgent, disconnected. So it's universe, human, universe, human, uni human, universe. I did this project for us to become more aware and starting the conversation that no one wants to talk about. You know, we are the problem, we are the cause, right? So we had the connection, we got disconnected, and the solution to this disconnection is balance. We can't keep taking, taking, taking from the environment and not giving back. This is capturing their thoughts, and in order to capture thoughts, you need to close your eyes and think, right? And this is just capturing their stories, and I've just, because most people tend to use tattoo because of life experience. Most tattoo shops in Jamaica are small and congested. Um, inking tattoo studios just here to erase all of that. Based on all those bad perceptions people have about the congested area, pushing forth um, a luxurious environment for tattoo lovers. If you wear a nice dress and the yes. tattoo is in the way, yes. you can just come purchase a cover up. It's like a color in last. It's, it's, uh, 24 hour yeah. and it's waterproof. What you have is a lot of cross-disciplinary presentation, very interdisciplinary work presented, yes? And it is particularly exciting. And I must say that the level this year has been particularly high. 
on the left side of the mural, for eight panels, you have that evolutionary perspective. On the right side, for eight panels, you have that creation perspective. But the both sides, both sides are stylized in such a way that show that there, there can be common ground between them. I'm hoping that it inspires. I'm hoping that it inspires and it also inspires me to do better work. The displays did not just appeal to the site through the use of print, colors, shapes, textiles and light or lack thereof, they also appealed to hearing in the form of animation. And some even allowed touch and interaction, such as this fun and engaging art room. The, the quality and the, the, the refinement of their processes has been particularly, you know, beyond our expectations in a lot of instances. And I do believe that these students, we have given them the opportunity to be able to step out of this space into any other space and represent themselves well. Plumber, and I am the captain for the Reggae Girls and we just want to thank you for your support and we hope that you continue in supporting us along our journey. Bye, we love you guys. A lot of you who are here, you don't spend enough time harnessing your ability to sell yourself, to convince me that I need you, not that you need me. You have to understand, you know, yes, you are looking at the job because of need, but nobody wants to hire you because you need them. They want to feel like they need you. So you have to spend some time at your home, in front of your mirror, practicing your skills, to sell yourself and sell your story. Why should I give you the job? Why? Why should I give you and not give somebody else? As all of you sit here today, start working out in your head before you reach into the recruiter, what is your selling point? How are you going to sell yourself? How are you going to convince them that they're not doing you a favor? That you are doing them a favor because you're such a great asset to them. And just like that, we've arrived at the end of today's program. Thanks for staying with us. If you enjoyed the program and want to watch it again, simply visit our website, gis.gov.jm or our YouTube page. You may also visit us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to learn more about our rich cultural heritage. I'm Sandria, reminding you to unleash the art within. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.